Good morning. Oh, goodness me. Just, I've got something down my front. So I'm already off to a great start. So uh, today, day 14, day 14, day 14. Missed yesterday, but day 14 today. Uh, binding, binding and quilting. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. I've just got my cup of tea. It's very cold in here today. You can probably see, can you see the steam coming off the tea? I don't know if you can, but it's very cold. <laughs> so, it's a mess in here today. So I'm sort of all over the place, but I'll, we'll work through it, we'll work through it. Um, hopefully the comments will start to show up at some point. Uh, right, so day 14, binding and quilting. So if you've managed to, I'll just tidy away my bits and pieces. If you've managed to satchel your blocks together, um, it doesn't matter if you haven't, because obviously these are techniques you can take onto other things. Um, but if you have, you're then going to be looking at quilting it, and then you're going to be looking at binding it all together. Um, so just do excuse me while I have a little tidy up and we wait for more people to come on. I literally can't see any comments. So I'm hoping you're there. Let's just have a little click. No, nothing. I'm in the dark. I'm in the dark today. Um, pin cushion. Where's my pin cushion? Who knows? Who knows? Okay, so uh, I, I, I'm presuming you're all there, but I can't see. We're off to a great start already. Okay, so firstly, I want to talk to you about quilting. Now, when you come to, well, first of all, I'm just going to talk layers. So when you come to layer up your quilt, um, I've had a couple of people ask me some questions about it. So we're going to talk about that first. Oh, I don't like not being able to see anything. Eh. No, I definitely can't see anything. No. Right, I'm going to poke you down and we'll talk about layers, okay? And then hopefully it might sort itself out. So, uh, da, 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 da. let's bring in some fabric. So we're going to, oh, here we go. Um, Linda's here. Mum's here. Yeah, Facebook is just being absolutely horrendous at the moment. It's not showing comments. It's hiding comments after they've been written. It's just not being a good chap at the moment. Um, right, so we're just going to talk about layers first of all, okay? So uh, we're going to say this pink is our finished quilt, or our finished quilt top, I should say. Obviously, this is not to scale, <laughs> but this is our finished quilt top. What we're going to do is we're going to place it onto our wadding and then our backing behind that. Now, for your wadding, what you need to do, and your backing, is you need to have them bigger than your quilt top. Oh, good morning, Sally, I can see you. Um, you, you need them bigger than your quilt top. Now, the reason why that is, is because when you come to quilt your piece, if you want to, you don't have to, if when you come to quilt it, the natural bunching that quilting does will, will shrink in those two layers, all right? So if you cut them to size, by the time you then come to quilt, it's going to be smaller. And that's just going to be very awkward for, for binding. Hi, Mary. Uh, hi, Angela. Um, yes, yeah, so that's what you need to do when you're doing your layer. Now, your laying, I'm just showing you here with foam. You won't be using foam for yours. A good 80-20 wadding is brilliant. I'll leave some links afterwards of places that have got some in stock at the moment and are still delivering. There are a couple of places about, um, so I'll make sure I link those. Um, you, you don't have to buy from those. They'll just be ones that I found online. It won't be um, my business. It will be other businesses I found. Um, so that's what you need to do for your layer. Now, if you don't have a big enough piece for your backing um, to be the same size as your quilt top, you can always patch some pieces together. Okay, so you could have four patches, you could have two, and maybe a decorative stitch down the centre, decorative stitches on the cross. It's up to you. Um, but if you've got a big enough piece, fab. If not, then just 
you can make it work, I'm sure. Um, hi, Hazel. Uh, hi, Margaret. Hi, Susie. Hi, Mary. Yeah, every, I, we've got, we're up to 16 quilt tops now. Uh, well, 16, 12 patches done. So I'm really, really thrilled because you have, to, I'll turn you up. You have to bear in mind, I started this isolation along 15 days ago, because today was actually day 15, but I missed yesterday. So 15 days ago we started and not many other places were doing stitch alongs to keep you all occupied. So we certainly, all us lot, all us in our group, we were a bit ahead of the curve. And um, I just think that we've done, we've all absolutely smashed it. So I'm proud of you all, just brilliant. Um, Patricia, I have found that I have six blocks that need a border as not quite, even though I've used a quarter foot. I mean, I can't really, add a border or just trim the others to size. Um, the measurements given should have given you uh, 12 by 12 blocks, but if they haven't done, um, either add a small border on all of those ones or just trim the other ones to size. Uh, Peter, you've just completed a 12 block, brilliant. Uh, Christine, up to block fly five, <laughs> up to block five, um, brilliant. No, slow and steady, take it, you know, we've got, we've got time, <laughs> we have got time. Right, so that's the sandwich for how you're going to put it all together, okay? Now, quilting is a different beast altogether. I, if you are new to quilting, let me grab my, I haven't finished mine yet, I haven't had time. Uh, but if you're new to quilting, you know what I would do? Just stitch in the ditch. Now, stitch in the ditch is just literally stitching where your patch is joined. So I would just stitch around each one of the 12 blocks um, and you can use your normal foot for that. Um, and that's lovely and straightforward and not too complicated. Maxine started, brilliant. <laughs> Joan, it's 3 a.m. there. Oh, gracious me, bless you. Um, yeah, so I just recommend stitching in the ditch. If you're obviously an experienced quilter, go to town, free motion. I'm going to be honest and my mum doesn't know yet, I'm gonna send mine out to my mum to quilt because she's better at it than I am. Just saying. But you can get quilt rulers um, as long as you've got the right foot. There's all sorts of things you can do, but if you're a beginner, just stitch around each block and then you're gonna have a beautifully quilted piece. But we're gonna talk about binding. The, the devil that is binding. <laughs> It's not really that bad. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut, all our binding is gonna be two and a half inch strips, okay? So I'm just gonna cut some two and a half inch strips. And I will poke you down for that. Hold on one moment. Uh, where's my ruler gone? Right there. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna cut some two and a half inch strips. So your binding will also be two and a half inch strips. We use them because it's easy. Um, you can get them a lot pre-cut, as you know, on jelly rolls. So two and a half inch strips are a really good size. So I'll probably just cut three strips for now, because I'm only doing this on a small piece, so we can go through each corner as it comes along. Straights are, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, so we're gonna do four mitered corners, and then we're going to join it up. I'll just bring in my pressing mat. Um, if you've got a pressing mat, just use a lint roller to get those bits off if you like. Uh, Karen, the blue fabric looks amazing. No, I've not got any. <laughs> I'm going through all, all of my fabric so quickly. Um, Susan's on three. Fantastic. Um, I can't read the question. Right, so I'm just going to press this just so that it is nice and flat. Now, what shall I use for my backing? Have I got enough of this yellow? Yes. So do bear with whilst I just trim this aside. So this is your quilt top, your wadding and your backing. And we're living in a world where this has been quilted, okay? 
So this has all been quilted nicely together and we're going to bind it. So I'm just going to trim it. So you'll do that once you've quilted your pieces together, you'll then trim everything up to the size of the quilt top so that you end up with a sandwich like this. So it's perfectly formed. So you've got quilt top, your wadding and your backing. It won't be a foam, it'll be a nice wadding. Right, I'm just going to um, basting spray these together so that we can replicate that it's been quilted. Like so. And like so. You know, I've just had a parcel literally thrown at me. <laughs> thrown at me from the chap's van. I mean, he's my local Hermes chap and he's a very nice man. And you hear a lot of horror stories about Hermes, but my chap, he's very reliable and um, really friendly, And but he launched at me this morning. He went, I'll sign for it, yeah? I went, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You sign for it. Okay, so we've got the sandwich. How are we getting on? Um, oh, mum's proud of me. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that fabric is a bit special, isn't it? I thought we'd bring in something a bit special, a bit special for binding. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, is it? But necessary. Right, so each of your two and a half inch strips, you're going to fold wrong sides together all the way along. All right? If you've got a binding tool that you just pull this through, then you feel free to use that. I just, I'll be honest, I just do it roughly like this so what you want to do is join your pieces together so you've got a really really long strip you can join it together as you go as long as you leave a good amount of tail you're going to need a good eight inches just so that it's easier for you at the end of each strip so you can join the next one on now we did join binding together um, what day was that? What day, what day, what day, what day, what day, what day? Uh, not yesterday, day before, when we did the borders and the sashing. I think we joined, yeah, the sashing, we joined strips together. But I'll do one so that we can recap. Um, how are we getting on? Yeah, brilliant. 58 of you watching this morning. Good morning, everybody. Right, so I'm just... Um, now don't be put off if you haven't got a pressing mat. You can do this on your ironing board. But you know me, queen of the pressing mat, so obviously I've got one to hand. <laughs> People were making binding long before pressing mats came out, so don't be put off thinking, oh, but you've got a pressing mat. You can do this on your ironing board with your big iron. You also don't need a little iron or a fancy iron. Okay, so actually I'm gonna join three. So no, I think two is gonna be enough for this. So clear the decks again. Let's try and keep organized. So two pieces of binding, okay? Oh, 65 people watching now, no pressure. Um, <laughs> right, so just to recap from when we did the sashing, you're going to have your piece, now this is flipped because this is mirror imaged so that I can see on my screen. So when I say directions, you'll be seeing the opposite. But when I say it, if you're looking down at your project, that's what you'll see as well. So when I say this goes off to the left, when you're looking at your project, it's gonna go off to your left, okay? Um, so I know it's a bit awkward with it flipped, but I need to be able to see that you can see. Right, so you're gonna have right sides up, this piece, two and a half inch strip is going off to the left, and then right sides together, you're gonna join up the two pieces and you're gonna have the second piece coming down to you. All right, so down to you, and you can just stick a pin in there if you want. You can also draw a line to help you. 
what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line from where the edge of your corner of your fabric meets the under fabric to the corner of the end of the under fabric all right so you're actually going um bottom right to top left so just draw a line if you want to i mean my pen's particularly useless but uh, draw a line if you want to okay now that is your stitch line. You don't want to go two and a half inches, two and a half inches. You don't want to go quarter of an inch that way. You don't want to go quarter of an inch that way. Oh, who are you saying happy birthday to? Happy birthday, Angela. Happy birthday to you. No, you don't, you've not signed in for singing, have you? Um, happy birthday, oh, fabulous. My um, son gets very upset if people think I'm anything other than 21. That's what I tell him every birthday. 21. Right, so you're just going to stitch along that line, joining those two strips together. Foot pedal. Okay. Now, you're going to cut this excess off, this excess triangle, but just check it first, all right? So just open up your binding and check first that it's a continuous piece. Because there are many reasons why we can get confused and I know I'm a devil when it comes to doing things like this. I just don't concentrate and then I'll put one bit wrong. But So open it up first before you cut it because then you can always change it, okay? So that's fine. Trim off your triangle. And we also spoke about the fact that for binding, I like to press open my seams. Um, because I find it gives a nicer finish to the binding. Um, with patchwork, we press to the dark constantly. I've said it constantly, constantly, constantly. Set your seam press to the dark. But with binding, I like to press open the seam so I've got less bulk and it works better for me. If you want to carry on pressing one way, then do please feel free to but I find it works better for me pressing it open. All right, so you'll have, let me get rid of some of these threads. So you'll have a join that looks like that. Okay, so when we flip it over, you've got a continual piece of binding. And that is how, you, that is how it's always done. And then you simply fold that back and you're gonna press that down If I can actually get my iron where I want it to go. You're going to press that down so you're following that fold and then you've got a long long piece okay long piece of binding. Right let's bring in our other bits and pieces. So this is your quilt top obviously not to scale what you're going to do is you're going to start, this is how I do it, okay? I start on the right hand side and I will start a good one, two, three, four and a half inches, <coughs> excuse me, I'll lay my strip here. So this is uh, a third of the way down from the top is where I'll lay my strip. And then I'll lay the strip all the way along. What I'll then do, using a pin is I'll mark another third and that is where I'm going to start stitching from even a little bit lower than that that's where I'm going to start stitching all right so I'm going to end up with this tail that's not stitched but it's ready for when we come to join everything together all right so we'll start a quarter of it, start I'd say about a quarter of the way up from the bottom. Let's just say that, all right? So you place your binding a third of the way down. It is for here anyway. You'll probably have, let's say 12, let's start, let's just do 12 inches, all right? A whole block length. Place it down at the top of the block and then you'll probably start stitching about four inches away from the bottom, all right? What we're going to do is we're going to take the machine and we're going to stitch quarter of an inch um, 
Hello from Belfast. Oh gosh, why do I always want to do the accent? I can't do the accent. Um, quarter of an inch, okay, and we're gonna go right down to the point and then we're gonna stop. Okay, so we'll do that. I'll just move my pin. I know roughly whereabouts it's going to be. Um, I stitched through my fingernail yesterday. You probably can't see that little dot. The little, a little dot, but the most pain I've experienced for a very long time. Very silly of me. Right, we're gonna stitch right to the end. Okay, and then we're gonna stop and we're gonna take it off our machine. Trim away any threads, because they're just annoying. You know what I'm like about my threads, they're just, just annoying. Okay. Then, what we're going to do is again, remember that when I say things, it's when you're looking down on your project. It will be reversed for when you see it on the video. What you're gonna do is take your strip and you're going to take it off to the right, like so. Do you see? So you're forming a triangle in the end of the binding. Then what you're going to do is keeping that triangle in place, you're going to bring your binding back so it's now along the straight line. But what you need to make sure is that your fold is straight against the edge. So let's just recap that if I can do it with a couple, this way around. Triangle and then back the other way. Line up your edge and then line up your edge and you're going to stitch from point to point point to point. Yeah, wasn't concentrating and oh gracious me that hurt. There was some language. <laughs> there was some language that was best kept in the studio. Right, quarter an inch. To wobble on the table this morning. All the way to the end. I'll just go slowly. So again, to the very edge and then stop. Oh, I've run out of bobbin. I didn't do any of that strip. That's just about right, isn't it? So we'll just change the bobbin. So any big plans for your birthday, Angela, going out on the town? <laughs> oh dear me. Right. You know, I think I bent my needle yesterday when I was messing about. I should have replaced it, but um, as it happens, I didn't. Um, what are the colour blocks on my sewing machine? Oh, <laughs> they're seam guides. So I've got a, a tape measure, a zip, and a sewing machine. Right, I've done my bobbin. They actually, I don't actually. Um, they just live there because I think they're pretty. It's just a nice thing to see. <laughs> oh dear. Right, bobbin. Bobbin in. I'll just thread this up. Right. Okay, so where were we? all the way down this edge. Right, here we go. Right, right to the end as you did before. Trim off the threads. 
like that. Then again, um, no, I'm not using a walking foot, just my regular foot. Um, so again, taking the strip off to the left, sorry, off to the right. So when you're looking down at your project, off to your right, and then back on itself again. So you've got that triangle, and then you've got that fold flush with that edge. And then again, you're gonna go from point to, from corner to corner, point to point. If you've got a walking foot and you want to use it, do. If you've got a regular foot, mine seems to cope fine. And bear in mind, I've got quite a thick foam in here, so mine seems to be absolutely fine with that. So with a wadding, I'm sure that would be even better. So just making sure that's all lined up. And of course you can hand stitch this if you want to. Right, stop again. Um, oh, you're going to the local spa, brilliant, sauna. Oh yeah, glass of Prosecco, luxury foot So I mean, that is just fantastic. <laughs> right, again, uh, third corner, off to the right, make the triangle, back to the left. Folded edge against the edge. And go from the corner all the way to this corner. Slow and steady wins the race. Right, last corner. And what we're gonna do, because this is such a small piece, you'll have a nice long straight. So you won't be doing any of this joining the binding so near to the corner. You'll have a really lovely straight that you're gonna be doing that in. But um, I haven't got that luxury because I've got just a little piece to show you. So I'm gonna do this corner and then I'm going to stop uh, just an inch past the corner. And then we'll join the binding together. So pull it back bring it back on itself and stitch and unthread your machine. <laughs> Do you, make... you know, one day, one day, I'll wear my glasses. One day. When that day will be is anybody's guess. Right, I'm just going to re- do my corner and just stitch that down. So I'm going to do that corner, level with the binding and then I'm just going to come out an inch and then I'm just going to do a little back stitch because I'm going to put some pressure on that seam. So trim, trim, Right, joining your binding. Okay, are we all okay? Uh, you have made the corners look so easy. Oh, they are easy. They really are. Not scary. No, not scary at all. You can do it. Right. Now, joining the binding. Okay. Trim off those. Threads. Taking a piece of your binding or another two and a half inch strip what you're going to do is you're going to lay the binding you've just been doing, so not where you started but where you finished, you're going to lay that over the strip that you've got loose, okay, just lay it over the top. Now where underneath, where the bottom, the bottom piece is, your start piece, is you're going to lay a two and a half inch strip, so two and a half inch width ways. You're gonna join, you're gonna line it up against that end, and you're gonna line the other end up against the ending piece. Alright? And then you're going to trim that ending piece off. 
to two and a half inches. Okay, and then you can get rid of that. You could do, use the other end of your, you know, a loose end. Um, it's not very straight, but okay. So we're going to join these together. Now, you do have to concentrate with this. Um, I just need to get some more fabric. <laughs> Uh, you're struggling to find the 6pm post. It's in the event page. If you go to the event and in the discussion, they're all there. You just have to keep scrolling down. Right, to join these together. Now, you do have to concentrate, all right, because um, I'm just unpicking something so I can show you. You do have to concentrate because it's very easy for this bit to go wrong. You can fix it as long as you don't trim off like when we made the binding together, as long as you don't trim off your corner, you'll be absolutely fine. So do just excuse me while I make this a little bit neater for you to see. Get rid of these threads. Get rid of that thread. Okie dokie. So what you're going to do is just pull each piece apart from each other and you're going to open them both out so they're wrong side up, okay? Like this. Then you're going to twist, see this is where you can get in a pickle. You're gonna twist this one, the one in your right hand, over, away from you, okay? And then you're going to put, line up those corners, like so. This is fiddly because I've only got a small bit to show you, like so, all right? And then you're going to stitch from corner to corner. So when you unfold it, it will be a continuous strip, all right? So let's just do that again so you can see. And we'll use a, we'll use a couple of pins as well. So you've got your bottom strip and your top strip. Pull them apart open them up, <coughs> excuse me, so they're wrong sides up, wrong sides up, and then you're gonna take the, t the one that you ended with, you're gonna turn it away from yourself and you're going to lay, that one is your under piece, and you're gonna lay the top piece across. Now if you pin it into place, it'll be a lot easier for you to hold. And then pin this bit into place as well. You're then going to stitch from corner to corner. So you're using the under piece here as your guide and the top piece there. Again, draw a line if you want to. What you can also do is just double check by pulling it open and making sure that that is right. Now I'm just doing that now and I'm thinking to myself, I need to fiddle with it because I can't, these pins I hate pins. You know me, I hate pins. Okay, and then I'm just going to stitch it. I don't know why I hate pins so much. And I think I should have made a, just a slightly bigger piece so it's less fiddly for me to show you. But we live and learn, we live and learn. Right, make sure I don't stab through my finger line the pieces up. I'm just folding my, um, the piece I've already bound because it's easier for me to just keep everything in one place. And I need to blow my nose. So we're going really well. <laughs> Got my nose to blow. Not enough fabric to pull on. But of course you'll be doing this on a lovely big quilt where it's flat and straight. quite lined up how I would like but now if I've gone wrong here we can rectify all right um I'm just gonna blow my nose I'll just leave that there for you for a second while I'm just blow my nose Damn, babe. I'm never snotty until I come in here right so what you're gonna do then is you've got your binding so you've joined it together, and then if you pull it flat, 
it will then be the length of your piece. So then what you do is after you've checked it, because if for any reason you've gone opposite ways, you can unpick it. Unpick it. You're just going to chop off that triangle. Probably with a bit more neatness than that. And you know, I like to open my seams for my binding. So I'm going to do that again, a little bit fiddlier because it's all joined together, but you can still do it. Just open it, use a bit of, uh, you know, yank it about a bit. Then you snap it like this. I say snap it, but you're just pulling it taut. And then you're pressing. And what you've got then is one continuous piece that you're just going to stitch a quarter of an inch along. Okay. I've got a video on my YouTube channel from one of my shows on Hachanda where I spoke all about binding. And it's a really good close up angle of how I joined it together. So if this isn't if you can't figure it out from this, go to my YouTube, just my name, Abigail, and find one of the Hochanda shows. It will be about 13 or 14 videos down. And it's a real good close up angle because they've got, obviously they've got the overhead. So it's a real good close up of how to do your binding. So I'm just gonna quarter an inch stitch now. Keeping that taut. If you hear any funny noises, it's bin day today. There's the bin lorry there, just as I said that. Right. So now, that's all your binding attached. So what you're going to do now is turn the binding round on all the points. So you've got something that looks like this. So now you can see you've got perfectly mitered corners. So mitre corner, mitered corner, mitered corner. All right. And then what you do, get rid of your threads because anything left over, you're gonna, if it tucks, comes out, it's just gonna be frustrating. If you don't use a quarter inch seam allowance and you've gone a bit wider, fine. You will need to then trim back your wadding because you're gonna have bulk in there that you've not accounted for with your strip. So you can just trim back any wadding you've got left over. So this is the reverse. And then you're simply gonna start from a nice straight edge. I like to hand stitch my binding on the back because I am no good at keeping my stitches accurate on the front. So you turn it round and quilting clips are invaluable here, invaluable. But I'm just gonna pin it so you can see. Quilting clips are going to keep everything so secure. And again, not touting for any business. I don't sell quilting clips. Um, but you're going to find it a lot easier if you use quilting clips. So I'm just pinning this down so you can see. That's how it's going to be. And then when you get to the corner at the back, you're simply going to flatten it down and fold that piece back. So again, a bit dodgy because I'm trying to do it on the reverse. You've got a mitered corner. But you can um, press that, flip it round, use your quilting clips again. I'm trying to pin it so you can roughly see it without my fingers in the way. But then you've got your mitered corner. Okay, and you're going to do that all the way along. Now, once you've pinned all this or quilting clipped it all down, you can 
hand stitch as I've said I prefer to hand stitch so that I'm not messing around with any of the front um, if you want to you can once you've flipped this down you can stitch in the ditch on the front here which will then catch the back there are pluses and minuses to that the plus side is it's fast and your binding is going to be attached really quickly yeah plus who doesn't like that minus is if for any reason you haven't caught this or it's not completely straight the back can look a little bit dodgy but that's where your quilting clips comes in it's going to make sure everything's secure and is in exactly the right place so i'm going to leave that choice up to you whichever you want to do what i'll do is i'll stitch in the ditch on one side so you can see sort of what i'm talking about i'll try and secure it as best i can i mean i should have just done that one i pinned but i've designed that one so if i flip this down I'm just gonna pin it from this side so I can actually see my pins make sure my binding is the same on this side that's not I just flip it down a bit more uh, I'm using a, a turquoise thread so I'm hopeful that you'll be able to see it So just pinning that in I'm just doing this one here so I'll do a bit of top I'll do a bit of top stitching here um, and then you'll be able to see at the back what it looks like yeah hand stitching definitely uh, lo will look neater again it's time consuming um, but you know you can make that decision so I'll just stitch this so you can see what I'm on about. So if I was hand stitching the back now, I would simply hand stitch this lovely straight line, or well, straight-ish, because I've got my pins. Um, and then you wouldn't see the stitching at all, right? But with this way of stitching in the ditch, you'll obviously be able to see this on the reverse. So let's just have a stitch. So I'll just take it out there because I don't want too too much because I am going to use this as a mat for my uh, biscuits. <laughs> so if I take out these pins, get rid of the thread, so I give it a fair chance of you seeing what it will end up looking like. See, I don't like it at all. You can see. So another pin there. So on the front, you've got a lovely bound edge. Beautiful. From the reverse. Dependent on how you fold it over, you'll have a little flap. You can, of course, bring this up further so you really are just catching that edge. But if you're stitching, what you're doing is you're stitching on the front because you want it neat on the front. So you're going down that line. So it's better to have a little bit extra on the back so that you know you're catching it. Yeah, so that's, again, where your quilting clips come into play. Uh, but you'll do that all the way around each corner you'll fold keep going straight and then bring the side up and you'll have beautiful beautiful mitered corners front and back yeah front and back really be really beautiful put my pins away right let's bring you up see you. hello <laughs> don't know why i have to make that noise every single time so that's talking about your layers. I'm just turning my iron off. It's talking about your layers and that's talking about your quilting. Um, oh, it makes sense to you. Fantastic. Yeah, it's lovely and neat. Um, and do you know what? If you're gonna hand stitch it, just sit in front of the TV, have it on your lap and hand stitch it. You can have a lovely blanket on you. Just hand stitch it while watching, you know. Let's be honest, we've got nowhere to go. <laughs> so a bit of hand stitching in the evening. But yeah, so, ish, I mean, I haven't done the size, and I'm just holding this one still, but you get the gist. Right, 
next project, just hit the light as I usually do. Next project, rainbow. I've done it as a cushion. You can do this as a table mat. You can do it as a wall hanging, um, up to you completely entirely. I've done it as a cushion, I'm on my tiptoes. Don't know why. Um, this was my prototype, so you can see it's not completely accurate. I've got a bit of, that's annoying, and the, and the fact it's in the middle, really annoying. Uh, but this is our next project. It's not gonna take us long, um, but what it is, it's gonna teach us some new techniques for angles, curves. Um, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, Lynn, you prefer to hands Yeah, just think it, just, it's nice, isn't it? It's just nice. Uh, so yes, yeah, so the rib, uh, ribbon, rainbow, people are putting rainbows in their windows to show, you know, we're all in this together, all a bit of solidarity and, um, also so that when people are going walking they can spot rainbows so if you remember the children and i spotted 33 rainbows on our walk the other day and we didn't have a rainbow seb then came home and drew a rainbow so he was happy as larry and i someone suggested and i can't remember who it was that we did something with rainbows so i didn't want to do i didn't really want to do a, like a rectangular I wanted we've done rectangle now we've done square wanted to bring in some curve so this is what we've got curves we've got let me bring this in so you can see we've got curved flying geese yeah curved flying geese you won't see those every day um, I had to work out all the dimensions all the angles the whole lot um so it took me you know all day yesterday oh thread it took me all day yesterday to figure it out but i got there in the end now i if you haven't got plain fabric it really doesn't matter patterned fabric would look i think personally more beautiful i'm going to be using batiks for the one we stitch up so i think that's going to look particularly nice and yeah great as a, well um jaden said it would be great as a neck pillow when you go on your travels i said to him yeah that's great where are we going <laughs> where are we going nowhere um but yes you could use it after you could use the uh, basic shape as a neck pillow after um yes yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing now a couple of things First thing is, it's going to be, um, you're gonna have to download the pieces. It will be free, there will be no sign up. You will just have to download the PDF because of the angles, all right? Um, and you're gonna need to cut them exactly how the PDF shows you to cut them. So that's all you're gonna have to do. And I'm gonna aim to get that PDF up by six o'clock tonight. Easy. Honestly, you're going to have the pieces, and and each section is the same. So we've got 12 sections, and they're all the same. All right. So once you've got one section down, you might want to do it in a different fabric. You might want to test it first. Um, but you will need to download the PDF. No sign up. No, you have to like this, that, and the other. No, you have to share this, that, and the other. No, it's not going to cost you anything. It's just a PDF. It will be on my website, but again, you don't have to sign up because it's not, you don't have to put it in your cart and check out. It will just be a PDF on the main page that you can click on and download. Easy, all right? And then tomorrow we'll cut out the pieces. I oh, know, cut out the, is it gone dark in here or is it me? Uh, we'll cut out the pieces and then we'll do some stitching. And we'll probably do this over two or three sessions. Let me know how you want it spread out. But I think we could get this done over three sessions if we drag it out a bit. Um, right, I think that's it. So I'll post a link on here, on my page, at before six o'clock. Um, Lynn, you've got vertigo at the moment. Oh dear me, Mum, my mum gets vertigo actually. It's not nice. Right, that's it, I think. Um, I'm gonna go off and put this back in my window. 
Uh, but I'm gonna give you two ways of doing it. One as a uh, pillow cushion and one as a quilted piece. So a quilted um, something for your table. Maybe you could put two together and have it as a centerpiece and put something in the center. Glass of, uh, bars of flowers or something. Right, okay, I'm off now. I'll post the link for the free no sign up download uh, later on. I've just got to get it from paper to scanner to computer. <laughs> Wish me luck. Um, and thank you all so much for joining me. I know we had it on this page today. Um, I'm going to be doing it on this page going forward because a lot of people couldn't find us in the event. Um, so I shall carry on uh, every day still at 11 o'clock. Christmas tree mat, perfect. Christmas fabrics, perfect. Ooh, now I'm wondering if I should do my what I'm going to stitch up in Christmas fabrics. Mm, that is a that is a one. I'll sure think on that. Um, right, I'm off. Thanks everyone for joining me. I'll see you same time tomorrow at 11 o'clock, but I'll post the PDF link before six o'clock today. Fingers crossed all goes well. If not, it will be today. Uh, right, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.